Welcome to Wall Horse Racing All the Time. I'm Alan, your host. Today we're going to be talking about tomorrow's the Travers Stakes, G1, the main event of the summer over at Saratoga Racetrack. And the question here remains we've got some big heavy hitters in there, a few long bull hitters out there. Can one of the long shots win the Travers? We got eight entries, and you got your big ones in there. You got your big ones. You got your uh, Dornock is the favorite winner of the um, winner of the Belmont Stakes at Saratoga. Winner of the Travers. Currently ranked, he's the leading point getter for the uh, Breeders' Cup standings right now, and he's the opening favorite at five to two. Dornock. So that's gonna is he a lock <sighs> we'll get to that no no I don't think he's a lock what about some of the long ones what about you got corporate wisdom not that it's a bomb an eight to one shot Chad Brown trained undefeated in three starts something interesting about that the winningest stable there one of the most successful stables at Saratoga, Clarvich Star, uh, Clarvich, or Clarvich Star uh, Farms. They led the Saratoga meet last year in victories. You got Chad Brown. He also has another one in there, seven to two shot. The always dangerous and the uh, agnomatic uh, Sierra Leone. Always around, always around the wire, uh, but seems to have a knack for just losing, but never right off the board. Finished second by a nose in the Kentucky Derby. What about this uh, corporate wisdom, this three? Opens eight to one, so Chad Brown has the two entries. He has Sierra Leone, who has to be used, has to be used in the win spot. Or does he? The thing with Sierra Leone is, this one, there's some, there's some speeds in here, and um, Sierra Leone's going to have to make that move come from way back to win. That's just Sierra's style. And will he have enough time if one or more of those speeds prevail and hold up? Mm, maybe, maybe, just maybe. Because this is a mile and a quarter, so it's something to be considered. But we'll go to that, back to corporate wisdom. It's a front-running type. Undefeated in three starts. Uh, Flavian Pratt keeps the mount on Sierra Leone for Brown. So Irod Ortiz gets the mount on the undefeated Corporate Wisdom, opening at eight to one. Can Corporate Wisdom win? Well, he figures to be one of the speeds in here. Is undefeated. You get the top jock in the country, at least on paper, in Irod Ortiz up. Some people argue that if uh, Flav Flavian Pratt got all the mounts that Ort Ortiz gets, he would be the leader, because Ortiz always gets the best horses. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe, maybe underneath. I can't see Corporate Wisdom hasn't been fast enough in any of the races to beat any of the big four. The big four being the favorite Doorknock, at five to two, the Philly breaking from the rail, Torpedo Anna, undefeated in all races but one, a G1 winning machine, um, Fierceness, championship two year old of the year last year, Breeders' Cup uh, juvenile winner, co second choice at three to one with uh, the Philly Torpedo Anna, and of course Sierra Leone at seven to two. Out of those four, can uh, can can that one beat any of these in here? Just want to see something here. Corporal Wisdom. Let's put it this way: I don't see it beating Sierra Leone. I don't see it beating the Philly. Torpedo Anna. 
Doorknock maybe. Maybe could slip into third if Doorknock misses the board or comes in fourth. Fierceness. Fierceness runs his pattern. Great race. Bad race. Great race. Bad race. Four wins. Three losses. One of those losses is a third place finish. All of them he got a bad start if you look at the trip notes. So it's not all his fault that he's getting these bad races. He's getting a bad start. Gets a good post for this race eight. But if he follows that pattern, runs a bad race, the three corporate wisdom can possibly slip in ahead of fierceness. I'm expecting a good race from fierceness, breaking from post eight. Really no excuse to have gate troubles, interfering with others. So we'll see. The other one I'm looking at as far as the long shot, now this is a 20 to one shot. This one is battened down at Belmont entry, 20 to one. Now this one finished third in the, in the uh, Belmont Stakes behind uh, Doorknock and Mindframe. Ran a decent race. You got the trainer, trainer of the year, Bill Mott. Knows the track, comes back on the track. And he does have a hundred Brisnet, he did, did register a hundred, he does have a hundred Brisnet figure registered in there. One of the few in there over a hundred. That one might be able to beat Doorknock. I know he didn't beat him in the Belmont Stakes. Mind frame, I'll tell you what, that guy, that race, Doorknock really shouldn't even have won the Belmont Stakes. Mindframe had him beat. And then he had that weird trip where he swung really wide and then came back. I mean, he had caught him, and I don't know what happened to this day, and now Mindframe's probably going to be out until December. That's neither here nor there. But batting down might be a long one. Not to win the race. Not to win the race, but use for third place in your trifectas underneath. You know, because if you got, maybe there's a speed duel. Maybe you got Doorknock and Fierceness. Maybe Torpedo Anna even. Mix it up too much. And Batten, and what, what do you call it? Cor corporate Wisdom. That one has some speed. What happened if they had a massive speed duel and things open up for um, Batten Down to slip into third? Will he slip into second? I think that's a real reach. But maybe you can make some money by throwing that batten down into the third spot in your try at 20 to 1. Maybe even throw the other one, the other one, the uh, Corporate Wisdom in there into third from Shad Brown at 8 to 1. Does have Irod undefeated in three. I. I'm reaching, I'm reaching here. I'm really not sold on Doorknock. I'm hearing some things, I'm hearing some things. People are talking about the Philly, uh, the Philly out there, uh, Thorpedo Anna. Now I've heard this from more people than one. They're saying that the Philly has, has been really, uh, they, they let her cool off. They didn't run her out, you know what I mean? They, she had the races won, they said she, they wound her down at the end of the uh, at the end of the races, so they, she didn't use her all. Is the bottom line for what I'm hearing, and that, although that might be true, you hear that sometimes, and um, maybe they did use her all, and they just didn't look like they were using their all. I, I I've heard that before about horses, and then they didn't turn around and win. But this one, it might be the real deal. She's getting spotted five pounds. She's coming in at three to one. I think the saving grace in this race is that Doorknock is a, I see him as a vulnerable favorite. I see him as a vulnerable favorite. I don't see him as the one to win this race. <laughs> and if people pour money on him, that's gonna open the doors for the others. That's Sierra Leone. 
You know what horses I'm going to use in this race? Multi-race place, and I might mess around with a try or exacta. We'll see. I'll let you know tomorrow for sure. See what the odds are on the board, what I'm thinking. I'm thinking uh, Fierceness. Fierceness, he runs his race, and there's no one as fast as Fierceness when he's on his best. No one is fast as fierceness when he's on his best. I mean, the, the thoroughgraph figures, the uh, ragazin sheets, the buyer figures. He has multiple races that's just faster than everybody else. So I gotta use him. I'm not gonna leave the fastest horse in the race out, get cute, and get burned that way. Just something to keep in mind. And Sierra Leone has never missed the board. Always around. I don't see Sierra Leone coming in. Probably any worse than second. And the beauty of that is he's gonna he's opens at seven to two, so he's the longest odds of the big four. You're gonna have fierceness taking money, you're gonna have the Philly taking money, and of course you're gonna have Doorknock taking money. Sierra Leone might offer some nice odds despite being the horse that's always around that everybody's talking about. His betting the public is, is furious with him by now, but it's not, it's not Sierra Leone's fault. Out of Gunrunner, a beautiful, beautiful physical specimen, specimen, Sierra Leone. So I'm leaning that way, something with a try. How do I do the try? Who do I key? Do I key Sierra Leone and Fierceness first and second, and then work underneath? I see that as the ticket. I think the Phillies up against it. The only way Torpedo Anna comes in first or second in this race is if what some people are saying that they just didn't—they didn't even extend her. They let her wind down at the last race. She's winning by open length. She's averaging about five, five length victories every race. Just amazing. If that's the case, that they're just winding her down, they're not even really pushing her. I mean, maybe we could be talking another Rachel Alexandra here in this case. And she goes out and dominates this field. That would be something. I'm not going to write that off. I don't think it's going to happen. But I don't think it's impossible either. Corporate wisdom. Not really thrilled. Batten down. I see that as the one that might do some damage in here. When I say damage, I mean sneaking into the trifecta somehow. Do I see him second? No. I see Batten down as the threat to crash, uh, make the trifecta uh, noteworthy at 20 to 1, and hopefully see Doorknock miss the board. Because he threw a couple of clunkers in there before he went on that, that spree. K Kentucky Derby was horrible. It's funny. I used him in the Kentucky Derby, and I talked to some people, some insiders in the game. And they're saying he's terrible. No, no way. Can't use him. Not even because of the post position. They just think he wasn't fast enough. Now they're singing his praises. That... And now I'm the one. I liked him before, but now I don't like him. So we'll see. I thought Dornot faced a weak Haskell field. That was overrated. What I do like is the horse is tenacious. He has shown the ability to get caught and come back. I like that he's won. He strung together some victories in a row and even if it was a weak field the Haskell and then the Belmont Stakes. Semi-weak. Oh you had Sierra Leone who had ran into trouble the whole race and was coming on but it was too late ran out of ground. You had Mindframe who did, did the bad move but there were no fierceness in there. Um, there was no Thorpedo Anna. So we're going to see something uh, a little different this race. 
How about the other long shots? Talked about corporate wisdom, talked about batting down. I can't go there, they just look too weak. I'm just glad they're in there to maybe boost the odds a little bit of the others that we don't have a six horse race, which would not have been fun. So, we'll see. So how are you gonna play this? What about the exacta? If you're gonna play an exacta, what do you do with this race? Uh, to answer, so to answer the first question, can a long shot win this race? I say no. I don't think any of the long shots have a shot. But I do think Corporate Wisdom and, uh, has a shot to sneak into third in the trifecta at longer odds. And we'll check what the, uh, um, not Corporate Wisdom, uh, yeah, Corporate Wisdom, no, Corporate, um, Batten Down. I think Batten Down is the one that could pay, sneak into the try at longer odds at 20 to 1. Watch the board, see what he looks like in the paddock. You got Junior Alvarado up again, and you got Trainer of the Year last year, uh, Belmont. Third place finisher, Belmont Stakes. Made a decent race that race. And does have a Brisnet figure to his record over at 100, which is good. And see what the odds are on Corporate Wisdom, the three, the other Chad Brown entry, Clara Vic Farms. I would want more than eight to one. I know why Rod Ortiz is up. I know you got the great barn, winning barn at Saratoga, Clara Vic. But this one just looks a little too slow. I know he's undefeated in three. I think they're really pushing it in this race. I, I think he has to be higher than eight to one, much higher than eight to one. I don't think we're going to get 20 to 1 on batting down, but if we do, Christmas, definitely using the try. Who are the three that I think are going to come in in the try? I had to really think about this. Or three that'll definitely be in the exacta. My three that reach the exacta, now if you box these, you're probably not going to get back much, depending on what the odds are. Three, Torpedo Anna, Sierra Leone, and Fierceness. Exacta comes out of those three. Doorknock, maybe he can come in fourth. Now, would the try pay anything if you did something like this? Um, a one, two, eight, over one, two, eight, over one, two, four, seven, eight. And you include Doorknock in the try. In this case, I'd probably want a single horse on top. And if I had to single in this race on top, because that will get, that's getting kind of wide, a three over three over, over five. Might not even be worth it. Might not even be worth it. I think this type of try is one where you want to take a stand and put fierceness alone on top. That's what I do. Put fierceness alone on top and hope that everyone's betting against him. Because if the Philly will take money and so will Doorknock. Sierra Leone, I don't know. Leave Sierra Leone out on top. I don't want him on top. If I have to play a try. Use uh, Fierceness on top. Undefeated on the track. Has all the big numbers when he brings his A game. Underneath. Sierra Leone. And the Philly. And underneath that. Sierra Leone. The Philly, Doorknock, the three, Corporate Wisdom, and five, Batten Down. It's two over five. That's two over four. That's eight. I mean, that's 16 bucks for two bucks. And you could possibly make something. You could play it for 50 cents too, or a dollar, eight bucks for a buck. 
I think we might get a nice price on fierceness. And if you can, if we can get three to one or more on a horse that's the fastest horse in the race, undefeated on the track, it's Christmas comes early. Something to think about. Exact to play. Um, but in the multi-race play, maybe I, I'd use Sierra Leone and Fierceness in your multis, in your uh, pick fours, pick threes if you're going to go that route. They don't, they don't offer the 50 cent pick threes over at Saratoga like the other tracks. We're doing a card where I have my selections made. I just have to make adjustments after scratches for Saratoga today. I'm putting my live picks out there like I do every day for one of the premier tracks, sometimes two of the premier tracks each day. So I get your selections. Sometimes I get them out there real early. Then I'll get them out there. I'll keep them out there so you can get started on your handicapping. And then come in and make the adjustments after scratches. So you have selections to get it done and I, I'm doing that as kind of a um, you know I'm the, I'm the selections guy you know, Mr. Horse Racing and you know I give you your, your, your information for those interested in handicapping for the day maybe you want to check somebody else's picks or a winning players picks <clears throat> but no matter how winning the player is if you're using their picks I suggest you Look at them, do the legwork yourself, and see how good these picks actually are. Do they, do they hold weight? Do they check out with you? Maybe you really love a horse and you put a lot of work into it. If you really like a horse, don't never let somebody else talk you off your, your selections. That's, uh, you can always add a pick. Right, that's that's lays the groundwork for psychological horrors, changing your pick for somebody else's. So do the leg work and make sure it everything jives with you instead of just blindly playing playing somebody else's picks. So Travers Day tomorrow. Let's talk a little bit about Travers Day. Are you thinking about going to the Travers? Just general admission remains. I was planning on going there. All seats sold out. So, and I know what that's like. I've been there a number of times where I got with it, got the GA, and it makes for a very long day. I mean, you could clamor for seats. They have some public seating somewhere, but it's away from the track. You can't see the track from there. You can see TVs from there, but everybody gets those seats. Everyone sits there. They don't even get up because sometimes a lot of these people don't look like they could stand for long. So they're parked out there all day. And if you get up from one of those, if you happen to grab one of those seats, if you get up, it will be taken immediately. And it's not like uh, you could put something down and hold the seat. That's No, 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 not in Saratoga. And when you go out there to watch the races, which, which is what I would do. I wouldn't watch it on the screen. I'd go out there and get as close to the rail as possible. And from there, you know, watch the race. And even then, you know, you're watching it mostly on the big screen, except for, you know, when they're coming past for home. Or maybe at the starting gate for the Travers for the, one of the longer races. And you're shoulder to shoulder with everybody, so that's a, you know, it's a tough deal. You know, if you're going there, it's still fun. It's still fun, but you got to get there early. Unless you're staying overnight, you get a hotel or a motel somewhere in Albany the night before, and then you're about 45 minutes from the track. And then post time tomorrow, Travers Day for the 14 races, 11:20 a.m. So <laughs> you got to be out. We got the golfers there. Here they have golf ball. I don't even know if you could see them. Eh, they're down there. Huh. 
got cars coming past. I'm in a parking area. The golfers. Guy doesn't know how to fucking park. The guy has the whole place to himself, no cars around. And he's having trouble fitting into... Let me see if I can get this up. Yeah, there he is. He managed to sneak in. Takes all kinds. So as I say, 11.20 a.m. So you want to get in there early. Of course, parking there is fairly non-existent. Oh, you got to park. There's this big field where you park. Everybody parks. But it's, uh, say you left. Now, if I left and drove tomorrow, I'd have to, and I wanted to stop for breakfast, right? Go for the day. Go for the day. Here's what I'm looking at. Now you figure it's about a 200 mile drive. 200 mile drive, so kind of 195, 200, I don't know what it is. Well, maybe you got, you, got, you got to go over the bridge, bridges and shit. So you figure the drive is about any three and a half, I don't know, depending on any traffic. Whatever, if you hit it perfect, maybe you can get there in, in about three hours. I don't know. Maybe it's a little over 200. I don't know the exact distance. But you're talking hours on the road. Then if you eat something and if you throw it down real quick, then you got to get to the track. Then you got to get to the track. I smell weed, folks. This guy's definitely lighting up. There he is, you can probably see him behind me. And then you park, and you go, you, where you park, you're talking about a three quarter of a mile walk to the track, maybe. It's kind of like up a hill, you know, on grass. So you get a bit of a workout to get to the track. And hopefully, when you get inside, you have time to make that bet. So remember, post time 11.20. I remember the last time I went, I went to, I went, again, it was, I, I left early in the morning. We went up there, took the drive. I don't even know if we got a chance to stop to eat, but practically had to run to the window, a window or the machine, and just managed to get in a bet in time. And the horse's name that was in this race, I think it was the 12th, it was a horse... In the first race, it was a horse named after, named after Derek Jeter of the Yankees. If it wasn't 2012, it was maybe in 2010 or 9. I don't know. One of the other years that I went, it was a Jeter horse in the first race. I don't remember if I won the race, but I remember having to rush to get it in. And that's what it would be like tomorrow if you leave early in the morning and head up there, which is still fun, really. What are the odds of me being there tomorrow? Very, very slim. I'm not going to write it off as impossible. I'm not going to write it off as impossible because it's still today. If It depends. i got a couple of friends. I, I don't know. You know, I don't want to drive up there alone. Um, if somebody's on a whim and all of a sudden you get this horse racing urge. So we'll see. But most likely I won't be. But what I will be doing, and I promise you this, I will get the picks out there for all 14 races for Travis Day tomorrow at Saratoga. And I've been on fire with my picks. If you're seeing this video for the first time, you've seen me for the first time, good morning. If you're seeing this video for the first, uh, seeing this show for the first time, what you wanna do to get notifications of these shows, where you can find them, you get it in advance, click the subscribe button and there's a bell next to the subscribe and click that bell a couple times so it turns black. This way you get notified. If you get notified, you know how the deal works. You know if a video is out there. You don't have to respond to it. You don't have to do anything at all. So, yeah. So, be on the lookout for that because I'll have pics out there. 
today I'll have picks out there. For example, I've already done the picks. They're all together. Now when I get in from doing this, when I get in after this is done recording in a little bit, I'm going to check the scratches and make adjustments to whatever races need be. Actually, I know in advance, unless there's been any changes, I did take a peek at the scratches. Show scheduled to start at 12.15 p.m. Eastern Time. I only have to make possibly adjustments to a few races. So it's, it's not looking too bad, the scratches today over in Saratoga. 12 races. I mean, the card's tremendous. Tomorrow, 14 races. Uh, six stakes races, five G1s. It is going to be a card for the ages tomorrow. It got capped off by the Travers, and that's always a lot of fun. And when the Travers go off, they treat it like a triple crown race. I get chills just thinking about it. Standing there near the rail as all the horses lined up. And everybody, everybody in the place, you can almost feel the shake, everybody is standing up, cheering, and the race, the Travers didn't even begin yet. It's electric, the crowd. What, a, what an experience, it's electric. It's, a, it's almost like the Bel Belmont Stakes. I, I'll tell you, I've been to the Belmont Stakes and I've been to the Travers multiple times and it seems like the start of the Travers is a bigger deal to the fans that they're more vocal and cheering than, the, than for the Belmont Stakes. Both are loud. But the Travers, so if you get there, you'll see. If you're at the race, I, some of my friends are going to be there. And I know they're going to have a blast. And uh, you'll see for yourself what I'm, what I'm referring to. Why is this going up and down? So you see what I'm referring to as far as this Travers goes should be a lot of fun. So, then today the races begin at Saratoga at uh, 12, 1235. 1235, 12 races. And for those of you, I'll get, I have, again, I have the picks out there. I'm putting the picks out there in a little bit. I'm going to have the picks out there at 1215, so you'll have them. After scratches, the oil adjustments, ready to rock. And the good news is, I will also have uh, selections out there today for the for Delmar. For you Delmar players, post time is at 6 o'clock. I will post a show with Delmar selections for today, Friday night. So I know a lot of you like to play the races on a Friday night. So that should be a lot of fun. We got that to look forward to big big day of racing today and the nice thing I can't say enough about this the beauty of Saratoga this weekend the weather is going to be mint it's mint there today it was beautiful there yesterday and tomorrow the weather is supposed to be flat out fantastic for Travers Day now that's what it's all about so We'll get ready to rock this here. I want to wish everyone a great weekend or a great day whenever you're watching this. Win some money. If you're playing the races, play with your head. Ice water in the veins. You don't want to get too emotional. Set aside how much you want to wager with. Have fun. Enjoy the races. Best of luck today. Thanks for watching, everybody. Talk with you soon.